Welcome everyone, this is Owen with Shift Click Learn. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how I modified my cute beaver in Inkscape. So let's hop right into it. Okay, so this is the modified beaver that I'm going to be drawing. As you can see, he's riding a cannon in the water and he has a little cutlass and a cool looking eye patch. He is a true pirate. Arg. First thing I'm going to do is import the old beaver. Okay, so this is a beaver that I drew last week and if you want to know how to draw this then I'll put a link in the description to the original video where I drew just this beaver. So the first thing I want to do is get rid of this log and all these particles. Sorry, they gotta go. It helps if you delete the back of the log first. That way you can see where the stripes are to delete them too. Okay, so now this makes it easy for us to adjust his arms. Next thing I want to do is add the eye patch on. So this is a really fun little touch to it. So what I'm going to do is click somewhere where I think it should be. And then I'll click on a triangle shape and then hold and drag it to the right. Then I want to click around halfway back up and then pull it, connect it back up the first one. I want the top to be square and the bottom to be curved like a pirate patch. And now we can kind of go in here and try to get this to look a little bit more pirate patchy. So what I'm going to do is next make the fill a gray color and then I want to make a stroke and it's going to be black as you can see and that looks pretty good. I want to position it where it would be and then I want to add a strap. So what I'm going to do is click on the left side here and I'm going to pull and drag and then come all the way over to the right side and then I want to make this stroke like 15 pixels. Whoa, 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 whoa. Maybe not 15. Five pixels. Yeah, five pixels looks pretty good. And that's going to be a black color. Then on the end here, I'm going to add one node. And what I want to do is try to angle this to where it fits the edge. So it looks like it's wrapping around his head like a band would. And likewise for the other side. Now this one's kind of glitching out because we curved it weird. So I'm going to have to take this curve and just curve it down like that. So now I want to pull it back over and boom, we have what looks like a band for the hat. So now I'm going to adjust this a little bit. So there we go. That looks good. And we can go ahead and delete this eye. So now this really does look like he has a pirate patch. So what I want to do is click on this patch part and hold control D and make this have no stroke. And I want to make the fill the same color as the skin and then I want to and then I want to use this minus here and darken it a little bit. Then I want to use the arrow keys like so and move it down and then use page down to make it actually go down to the back. So now this little pirate patch has a shadow on it. I want to focus it the shadow more down like that and to the left a teeny bit. If we need to get the rotation right we can rotate it to the left. So there we go that looks really good. Next we need to work on the cannon that he is holding on to. So what I want to do is first draw a circle around that size and I want to make this fill a black like so. So this is just a pure dark black. Then I want to position this to where it's kind of under his belly like so and this is going to be the cannon hole this whole cannon is going to be shooting. Then I'll go ahead and hold control D and I'll hold control shift and then size it up and that'll keep it perfectly in the middle. And I'll make this now a gray color and this stroke is going to be maybe like 15. Yeah, 15 looks good. Okay, now I want to do page down so it looks good. Now that it's in back, I want to move it up and to the left, make it look like the cannon is tilted to the right. So that automatically looks a thousand times better. And then we can go ahead and use the visor tool and draw the body of the cannon. So it's going to come back like this, curve up like this and then come back and connect up to the first node. This is going to have the same fill as the front except slightly darker. Once again, I'll use the ticks to make it darker. The stroke is going to be a black once again and it'll go ahead and be five or whatever we did last time. Okay, this is looking pretty good. So what I want to do is click on the paw, then shift click on the little piece that's covering the stroke on the end. And then I'll go ahead and rotate it to the left. So this one on the right, we can go ahead and delete it. Then what I want to do is hold control D over the one on the left and flip this horizontally. And then I'll go ahead and move it to the right. And then I'll rotate it a little bit. Next, what I want to do is adjust this a little better so it looks like it's part of the body and not just plopped on there by rotating it, squishing it, 
anything you need. We can go ahead and pull this one in because we do not need that. And then we can go ahead and once again, use this cover piece here and cover up the stroke like we did on the other one last episode. So there we go, that looks really good. Next what I want to do is hold control D over the left one once again, size it down a ton to maybe half size, and then do page down to make it look like his leg is there. We can go ahead and group that just for ease of loose use, not loose, and there we go. Now it looks like he is holding on for dear life and he's strapped on. Really quick, I want to add some details on the side of the cannon, so I'll go ahead and draw a circle with no stroke and this is a light color of the cannon, like that, as you can see, and it really highlights this a little bit better. We can hold Control D and maybe size this one down and put it to the right, and then hold Control D over this again and maybe make a small one, and just add a little bit of these circles, and this kind of just adds detail and looks really cool. It makes it look a little bit more like metal. So we can duplicate this once again and maybe add one up top here like so, and yeah, that kind of just adds a little bit of detail. After a little bit of adjusting, I think this looks pretty good. So we can go ahead and add the torch thing on the end. I forgot what it's called. I know what it is, but the little rope that catches on fire. For some reason, I can't think right now. But I'm just going to draw a curve somewhat like that. And the stroke is going to be five, maybe. Yeah, five looks good. Maybe a little bit less. So like four. Four looks really good. Next, I want to make this a nice rope color like this and... Then I want to adjust this a little bit and make it go page down. Finally, what I'll do is add some rope details by just making a twisting line that goes back and forth and back and forth on this line and staying a little bit away from the edge so this detail doesn't go over once we make it a thicker stroke. But this will kind of make it look like it's a rope. Okay, once you're done, push enter and we need to make the stroke like two maybe. Yeah, point two looks good, and then we'll make this a light version of the rope itself. Next, we can go page down and then adjust this a teeny bit, and voila, as you can see, we have a beautiful looking rope, and from afar, it looks like we added details, and it looks awesome. Next, I want to add some flames on this, so I'll go ahead and go to the corner of this right here, and then draw a spike sort of shape that gets bigger in the middle and then smaller on the sides and then I'll connect that back up to the first one and like that. Next what I'll do is X out the stroke and make sure that fill is a nice nice red color. Then what we can do is page down and get this node to be behind the rope so it looks good and then we'll hold control D on this and flip this vertically and then rotate it up a little bit. Then we can go ahead and size this copied one down like so and then make this orange right around that color next we can do the same thing we did for the red one and connect this back up to the first one and kind of just make this look like it's coming from the row last but not least we can go into the nodes if you really want to and change up some details so it looks like unique and then we can hold control d one last time and then we can go ahead and make this a nice looking yellow color somewhat like that doesn't have to be too crazy look too crazy yellow just something kind of subtle and that looks like the inside of the flame and we can go ahead and adjust this and make it look like a actual flame just like last time maybe an add a node in there and voila we have a good looking flame Ooh, i really like that i like that one better than the other one and yeah it looks like a flame so we've pretty much done everything but add the water so this is really simple thankfully we just need to draw a big old circle somewhat like that size and then it is a blue color kind of a not saturated really nice looking blue and we can go ahead and hold page down and make that go all the way to the back then we want to adjust this to make it look 3d and this doesn't look very detailed at all as you can tell because it just doesn't look good where the cannon contacts with the water so what i want to do is make some foam off of this so it's pretty simple thankfully i just want to start at the very beginning and draw a squiggle where you would imagine cannon being so i'll just keep drawing a squiggle and it's really nothing to it. i'll make this perfectly white and do page down to where it's back but not all the way right there that's the perfect thing then i want to make this pretty transparent nice and pretty i mean 25 so next we can go ahead and 
go around and do another wave and try not to match the uh, old wave and make this one on the outside. Then what I'll do is make that the same white and do page down all the way to the back besides that and then I'll make it even more faded out looking. So there we go. So the cool thing about this is since it's white, we can make this water any color we want and it'll still look good. So say we wanted to make it look like toxic sludge, as you can see, the shading still looks good. Say we wanted to make it look purple, then we could. So it's really customizable to what you like. Next, what I want to do is click on the main circle and go path, object to path. So we can adjust these nodes and I want to make this look squiggly. Now this does not, you do not need to do this. I just kind of like the look of it. It looks like a little diorama almost. I don't know. I kind of just like the look of it. So I'll just add a bunch of nodes around here and kind of make this shape a little bit lumpy. Then I'll move it around if needed. And now as you can see, we have a little piece of a diorama. I want to size this up a teeny bit and then move it up so now that we have this little piece here, I want to hold Control D over this whole thing, and I'll make this a darker blue color. I want to cl next click this button right here, and this will make it go all the way to the back, which is what we want, and then I want to size it up. Now I want to just move it up a little bit, and I want to make it kind of uneven thickness, and that kind of looks really good. And next, what I want to do is adjust these nodes to make it not match this whole thing a little bit better, and this gives it an extra layer of depth and I really like this look to it and we can stretch it out in some areas and some areas pull it in make this just look natural as you can see we have this whole entire pirate beaver thing done and I think it looks really really good thank you all so much for watching this episode I really do hope you enjoyed it and maybe even learned something if you did then please let me know by smashing that like button and consider subscribing I really do hope you enjoyed it but anyways this has been Owen I'm out